Yeah, we, you know, I, I get to use my fingers, my palms, sometimes my elbows yeah. to really go deep and allow things to open up. And uh, the, the process can be extraordinary. Mm. I, I have worked on people who have released deep seated trauma, violence as a child or as an adult. Um, deep anger, rage, violent rage, uh, and deep, deep sadness. And at that end of the experience spectrum, it can get very noisy, very animated. People releasing pent up aggression, pent up sadness. So um, it's been described sometimes. Natural Biohacker, what's up and welcome to the Natural Biohacking Podcast with a new interview guest today and I have Warren here, we are in Kopangan and Warren gave me a really, really interesting massage on what should be the topic today. Yeah, nice to have you here and maybe you can talk a little bit what what you do and um, yeah why you're here in Copenhagen. Mm, well thank you thank you so much and I really appreciate the opportunity to practice on both you and Nadia yeah. um, you guys coming around and being so curious and and so courageous yeah and and also so motivated to heal that's a real blessing for me um, Chi Ne Sung is the practice and it's a, a very old practice it comes from Taoist philosophy from China yeah more than 1,000 years old um, and uh, it is a focus Qi energy mm -hmm. Sang is to work on the organs and that's exactly what we do so we, we spend a lot of time um, massaging around the abdomen, a very vulnerable place, mm -hmm. uh, one which holds a lot of emotion. Um, you know, we have so much going on in our abdomen, it's, it's crazy. Um, the Taoist practice moved from China into Thailand around 500 years ago. Wow. And yeah, it's very old and, and it was almost lost okay. for nearly 300 years. But people like Mantaktia, Mm -hmm. who's now quite famous, and, and a little woman called Kuni, Kuni. Who in, yeah, both in Chiang Mai, and they're extraordinary practitioners. Kuni is, is very low-key, and she's, a, she's an old woman, a small figure, and smokes cheroot, the traditional cigarettes, yeah. and uh, part poisoning herself, or at the same time healing. And <laughs> Mantak Chia has just gone to superstardom, yeah. and... Uh, Both good teachers. Um, for me, I came to this practice five years ago. Mm. And uh, you asked how to come to Kopanyang. Well, I've been coming to this island for a dozen years. A just dozen? A, yeah, yeah, one dozen, 12 okay. years, just a party. Just a party? Ah, a full, party. full moon party. For, uh, for a couple of full moon parties and some other wonderful events which mm. are less known. Yeah. And more diverse, more open-minded people, mm -hmm. um, less crowds. What kind of guy you were five years ago where you come to this, What? or 12 years yeah. ago where you come to this island? So my, my background, a long time ago, I was in the military. Mm -hmm. and I was an army officer. Okay. And uh, I left the army in 1996. And in 97, I went to Afghanistan to oh, do wow. humanitarian work mm -hmm. as a volunteer in the okay. Taliban time. Uh, it was amazing learning. Mm -hmm. And that, that was just incredible um, place to be in. It was very humbling to be amongst people who have suffered so much yeah. and still love and still dance and, and still uh, have children, mm -hmm. uh, still tell jokes. And, and uh, you think that you're having a bad day. That's mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. Nothing. You know, um, what, what it taught me was 
real di human dignity, humility, and uh, human resilience. Yeah. yeah this human is a really resilience. powerful tool today. Very powerful. Yeah. And I spent the next 22 years working in humanitarian crises. Mm. So working in West Coast Africa, East Coast Africa, Sudan, um, Somaliland, uh, mm, uh, Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia, some places which are very difficult. And over 22 years, I accumulated not only experience and skills, but also damage, mm -hmm. also pain. Um, and that, that pain over these years had, had worked its way into my body. Mm -hmm. into my spine, into my nervous system, and yet I had no idea. Really, I had no idea. I'd put, I thought I'd put these walls up and I was witnessing some of the difficult times of people, communities, listening to their stories, which is such a privilege, mm -hmm. um, but accumulating some of that pain. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, How, how, how was this feeling? So when you're accumulating this pain, are you feeling tired or um, mm. yeah, you lost your drive maybe on one point? Yeah, so it's in three steps actually and each of them are associated to a spinal injury. Mm. My first spinal injury is in my neck, a prolapsed disc um, and everything down from my neck was in pain when it happened. Yeah, it was very, very scary. Um, and it comes from uh, it, it comes from the type of work that I was doing, the conditions I was in, and traveling in cars through very bad roads through the mountains of Iraq mm. and bouncing my head as I'm falling asleep. But also, mm. I was the passenger always nodding my head as I do as I dozed off. Mm. Um, so that's the physical side, but the emotional side was the relationship I was in. Mm -hmm. I was in a relationship that was full of fire, lots of ups and downs and uh, lots of drugs, yeah. lots of party, mm -hmm. and uh, a, not a balanced lifestyle. I would spend a month in a war zone or two months in a war zone, and I would come home and party. And I, I did that for 20 years. This was your escape from escape. the war zone? Yeah, yeah, I used to think it was balance. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah. it wasn't. It was yeah. just experience, lots of um, very intensive times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I was in this wonderful relationship, um, which was very challenging. And at one point, there was just too much fire. And literally... I broke my neck making love to my former wife. Wow. Yeah. How does this happen? <laughs> It, my neck physically was weakened by um, traveling around. Yeah. And, and, the, and the emotional connection that we had was very powerful. And uh, when, we, when I uh, got home, we were making love. And, and uh, the energy around us, something had to shift. Mm -hmm. And that was me. I, I, I broke my neck making love to my wife. And, and uh, it took me a little while to recover. Thankfully, I had a Chinese medicine practitioner. I was living in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And I had a where, Chinese... Where in Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka? Yeah, where? Uh, just outside of Colombo. Ah, know? okay. So yeah. In the northern part? Not so far north. Okay. It's kind of Colombo, but it's in paddy fields and okay. villages. It's a yeah. really beautiful place. And... Yeah. and uh, Yeah, living really quite an extreme lifestyle in, in this place. Very privileged lifestyle. Um, and anyway, so this injury occurred, and I found a, a Chinese medicine practitioner who helped me. And for a few months, every day, he'd put my head in a, in a, uh, like a girdle to lift up my, my neck, my, my, scalp, my skull, okay. and, to, and he'd crank me up. So my spine would extend mm -hmm. and, and just vertebrae, vertebrae would open up. And then he'd get behind my neck and gently manipulate the discs with his fingers to push it back in. Wow. Yeah. How did you find him? Um, a bl blessing. Blessing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. This, this guy, wonderful, he's a Chinese guy. He spoke virtually no English. But the words he could say were, you feel pain, no pain. Ah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and, and at times it was very, very painful. Yeah. And he applied lots of acupuncture and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so at this time I had no realization of the connection between both emotional and physical pain. Mm -hmm. From that time I've now suffered two lower spinal injuries and, I've, and I um, have learned that lower spine injuries about not feeling supported. Mm -hmm. That's the emotional side of it. Yeah. So if you're starting to, yes, there's a phys physical side, maybe sitting in chairs all day or poor posture, mm -hmm. but the emotional side is you're not feeling supported. And when you're not feeling supported physically, you, you slouch, your shoulders come down, you protect your heart, and so the shape of your posture changes mm -hmm. and it adds more pressure to your spine. So now I have the chance to open up my shoulders, open up my chest, open my heart, and have a straight spine, mm -hmm. and that's been very, very helpful. So coming back to it, my third spinal injury, I was living in Burma. Mm -hmm. At the top of my career, an amazing apartment, a great job, and my apartment overlooked the whole city of Yangon, and one morning I couldn't get out of bed. Oh. And I, I just realized it was my spine again, and uh, I couldn't walk, such excruciating pain, um, sciatica so the disc was impinging on the spinal cord which is running down the sciatic nerve down my leg yeah. very intensive and a friend of mine said to me come to Koh Phan Yang. and I said I can't be partying now yeah. I'm injured and she said no there's another side of that place mm. And the other side is here, where I reside now, yeah. and Sri Tanu. Sri Tanu, mm -hmm. which, as from your experience, is an incredible place of freedom and transformation. Yes, a place for seekers, people who want to find themselves, mm. or practices that are going to help them. There's always another side, yeah. Like you have the party side, and where the people are like going crazy and being drunk and taking mushroom shakes. Yeah. And then you have this side where a lot of healing happens. Polarity. Polarity, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, like, it has that very masculine side to the yeah. full moon party with twenty thousand, thirty thousand on the beach, drunk, vomiting on each other, exploring <laughs> things for the first time. But then you have this side. Mm -hmm. which is so much more peaceful, veganism, mm -hmm. um, very less alcohol. In yeah. fact, most of us here don't drink. Um, these beautiful beaches, sunsets, and healers, mm -hmm. practitioners of every type of healing modality. And, but you didn't know this side. I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. Just focus on party. Party. Yeah. Hit the beach. Yeah. Party. Take the drugs. Party. Yes. And then you came back to Kopangan to experience this new side of this island. Exactly. Okay. Exactly that. And I, and I came across uh, a, an incredible healer. Mm -hmm. She's a Thai lady, around 55 years old. And I thought I was going for a massage. <laughs> But it was a massage that changed my life, literally. So she gave me a version of Chine Sung. Chine Sung has been... Um, wrapped up in Thai massage yeah. and, and she's a powerful healer on her own and uh, it was a blood moon huge full blood moon <laughs> and her place wow. is overlooking this beautiful bay very powerful night and I walked into her, her bungalow which is open mm -hmm. and within just a few minutes I was weeping I, the stress was running out of me and uh, she gave me Chine Sa And it was the first time I felt chakra. Yes. Yeah. I've learned about chakra, you know, the seven wheels of energy in our body, but I didn't connect. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, intellectually, I understood. I had skepticism, mm -hmm. energies, what's that? What is an example for this feeling? 
So what would you experience in this to, to feel, ah, okay, this is the right. Anahata or this is the crown chakra? So <clears throat> if I take a step back, so the practice of Tine Sung, she was working on my abdomen. Yeah. And she reached a point, if you remember this point, yeah. under the rib cage, in the center, in the solar plexus, yeah. reaching up into your heart. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So Anahata. Where, where that is, so uh, she pressed deep in there and I stopped breathing. Actually, sorry, what happened was I let out this breath, like, <laughs> and it was a hundred year old breath. Yeah. It, it had dust on it, mm. you know, and, and then I stopped breathing. Mm. I don't know for how long for. I have no she idea. recognized it? She was just sat there and held space. Okay. And she touched me very gently on the heart, on the external part of my ribs. Yeah. And all of a sudden, <gasps> everything came back to me. And, like uh, a newborn. Newborn, <laughs> through the breath. Yeah. And, um, and I could feel electricity surging through my body. Mm. And she said, it's your root chakra. I said, what, what do you mean? I can't feel it. Yes, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling the surge coming up through, through my solar plexus, through my heart, up in through my sp upper spine, but not down. You think it's maybe also because, I don't know, when you go to the full moon parties, maybe you experiment uh, with some um, substances mm. or something, and sometimes these substances, uh, they... Uh, Yeah, they let us fly. Mm. So maybe uh, um, you needed to come down more and mm. the roots and find your roots again. Yeah, well, given that I was working in these high intensity places, always fast moving, not grounded, trying to be as best grounded as I could be, but really, it's it's quite a, quite an experience with people who might be suffering um, uh, different times, mm. even dying around yeah. us, yeah. and. Uh, Then with the drugs, yeah, so it was party time, um, mm. which is always such a temporary relief. But I, at that time, living in Burma, I was very much focused on my work, so being very professional, mm -hmm. um, away from the party so much. Um, but it was the work stress, accumulative work stress, that just built up in me, and all of a sudden one morning, that was enough. I was in a job, I didn't feel fully myself, and I didn't feel supported by the people who were, um, whose role it was to support me at a management level. Mm -hmm. And it, that stress um, took its toll over one year of that job. Mm -hmm. It was a privilege to have the role, but it was a very challenging role, and not feeling supported was a big part of that. Okay. And so after this one-hour session with this incredible healer, I went back to Yangon uh, in Burma, yeah. quit my job, quit my beautiful apartment, wow. <laughs> okay. quit a relationship that wasn't serving either of us. The And same I, relationship you talked about? No, oh, no. Okay. well, part. that was 10 years before. Thanks. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and I came back and had my second Chine Sao with mm -hmm. the same healer. And she said, uh, your root chakra, you need to connect with your past. Mm -hmm. Well, my past is that I had not spoken to my mother in 32 years. Wow. Until the day after my second Chine Sao. Mm. So you did it? Yeah. Then. Ah. I, I made a phone call to her the first time in 32 years and reconnected with my mother after my second Chine Sao. And this was the start of my healing. Mm. I understood about the connection with my root. Mm -hmm. uh, understood the energies surrounding that and how it felt in my body. And as soon as I finished that call, I was able to release a lot of mm, stored pain. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I cried. I was so lovingly supported by dear friends, um, but I, I, I truly wept. But I also thanked her, told her I loved her, forgave her, And I forgave myself yeah. for 32 corner. years of being, exactly, yeah. yeah, even before I knew what that was. <laughs> nice. And so, for, because I thanked her because 32 years of me living an extraordinary life, 
And finally, I found a healing technique of something that was very useful, very quick, very apparent. Mm -hmm. So I then committed my life to yoga. I went to Nepal and found an incredible teacher there and uh, spent years with him and then and discovered other healing modalities along the way until I come here now and I can contribute back. Mm -hmm. Initially in the early days I came to learn, to heal. I'm still doing those things but I have a third component and that's to teach. To teach. Yeah. And that's what I feel I'm doing with the Chine Sung. It's a, it's a practice which is uh, teaching people how to feel again, mm. how to feel the energies, how to uh, understand what's happening in their, in their bodies. And it should be a normal state that we feel our energy and that we have this intuition of our body, but we, we lose it here yeah, because of the 20th century um, energetic world with um, smartphones and big cities. And Absolutely. Yeah. So much noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many distractions. So much other energy that's yeah. going on around us. The energy of the roads, the energy of the workplace, the energy of money. Mm -hmm. All driving forces that distract us from ourself, our center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the, directly after these two messages, um, massages, massage, massage. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, massage. I'm also learning English <laughs> every day. Um, you felt that you need to um, give this to other people, or it needs a time like you want to work with this and yeah, you want to work on yourself. A, a little bit of both. Um, I wanted to be able to give back to this beautiful community with with a skill set and uh, a, mm, to be part of community. And, be, and I know this practice is so powerful for me, so I, I believe in it with my very heart. So I found the right teachers and, and uh, really committed myself to, c to continue with yoga, of course, and those practices, but to use this as my offering. To mm. communities and the experience has been extraordinary I've, I've learned about boundaries yeah. uh, like I I'm working on women and men who are going through very vulnerable times in their lives yeah. one where un, well until Tune Sung I probably never have touched a woman's naked body without a goal a mm. sexual goal yeah. in mind yeah. and here I have women and men lying very vulnerable mm. and me being very aware of where my hands are, where my eyes are, where my energy is directed mm. because women and men in states of vulnerability can feel any sexual neediness or inappropriateness mm. and it was very empowering for me and, and uh, the trust. Yeah. The trust that is offered to me mm. is my healing. Yeah, it really is my deepest healing. Yeah, and I, fe I felt this trust. So from the first uh, minute we met, mm. and yeah, um, a good friend of ours, Peggy, um, mm. was at your massage, and she talked about with Nadia, and then they, she talked with me, and then we met you like just instantly um, on Wainam Beach, mm. having a good time with uh, with each other, and. Yeah, and then when I was here and laying down, it was an opening up mm. and being very vulnerable, mm. yeah, like you said, just, I felt this trust. Yeah. This, this is really, really, really important because mm. I think there are a lot of people who, yeah, who maybe have this neediness or um, they are not fully their selves and in their power mm. and then they, yeah, massage you with your energy and with your fingers and hands mm. and I think this is yeah it's quite a tricky thing yeah, it's boundaries it, yeah it taught me so much about boundaries um yeah we you know i, I get to use my fingers my palms sometimes my elbows yeah. to really go deep and allow things to open up and uh, the, the process can be extraordinary mm. I, I have worked on people who have released deep seated trauma 
violence as a child or as an adult, um, deep anger, rage, violent rage, uh, and deep, deep sadness. And at that end of the experience spectrum, it can get very noisy, very mm. animated. People releasing pent up aggression, pent up sadness. So mm. um, it's been described sometimes as an exorcism. Yeah. 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 All except the crawling on the ceiling. Everything there arms and legs waving, pounding on the floor, screaming, yeah. roaring with anger. Yeah, I also felt this in, uh, in my massage. Um, you just tell your hands on one point, mm -hmm. um, the upper part of my stomach, and you just point it out, and um, it was like uh, anger. Yeah, and that's right. I want to release it, and why I have it, and mm. yeah, and then you just yeah, it was really painful yeah, mm. for for me mm. to release this anger, mm. and at this point I was thinking okay you work with my whole body not just on my stomach or on my abdomen right. on everything yeah and it was really powerful yeah good good thank good. you yeah. <laughs> i think uh, with nadia it was uh, the same mm. um she also told me like uh, sh there was a point where you touched her and was like ah no i'm mm, how, how can i say it I was, i'm cling clinging to to the feeling yeah yeah and mm. then you just Yeah, you go further to mm. uh, about this or over these boundaries, mm. and then she couldn't she couldn't release it, yeah. and then there is the emotion. Mm. For me, it was like this. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I had also like one time that I yeah was about to cry and mm. feeling very sad, mm. and mm. yeah, it's really powerful practice. Very so. powerful, yeah. and of course, that experience, very noisy experience, I explained, is extreme. Yeah. The other extreme is people fall into deep, deep trance-like states. Yeah, I think I was like Sub in the trance-like yeah. state. Yeah, and, and, and like yeah. deep in their subconscious and completely disconnected mm -hmm. or fully connected. Yeah. I'm not sure. And at that point, other magic happens. Some people astral travel, mm -hmm. some people um, relive past lives. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, recently I had two different women in one month came to me and they started to speak to me mm. and even sing to me in ancient languages. Wow, okay. Yeah. Languages I've never heard before, I've traveled quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and and th their bodies were taken over by... I don't want to say entities, but yeah. whatever whatever spirit mm. that they were channeling, yeah. uh, moving their arms, arching their back, um, moving their arms like in, in mudra and in gestures yes. and really very movement poetry. Mm. And at the same time with his starting whispering cantations until it gets louder and louder and, and spitting as they're speaking and, <laughs> and then breaking into this beautiful song in the same language. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you know something about the science behind Shini the Sun? Yeah. So, um, mm. yeah, why does such life-changing experience come up? Yeah, science. <clears throat> well, Taoism is a thousand-year-old philosophy. So it goes well before what we call science, which has really been around for, what, 150 years, 200 years. And these practices, like yoga, had been tried and tested for that long, peer-reviewed for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. what, what it tells, and they come from the root. So Ayurveda, yoga, and Chinese medicine, Taoism, comes from the same root, same areas of the Hindus Valley, which is now sort of southern Pakistan, northern India. And uh, what, what we know in Taoism is, or what we know in general, so you probably understand we hold energy in our bodies. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Well, sorry? Totally. Totally. <laughs> totally. You, you, can, you, you feel, no? Yeah. And we, we hold emotion in our bodies. And Taoism tells us that we hold emotions in very specific organs. Mm -hmm. As an example, our kidneys. Yeah. Kidneys are, are filtration. It holds fear. Mm -hmm. But it's energy. 
So it also holds courage. Okay. It's the li- opposite of fear. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Your liver, where you felt that anger, yeah. it holds anger, resentment, but also acceptance. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Our, our stomach, sadness, happiness. Our lungs, grief, joy. So when I massage a muscle on your arm, I release energy. When I massage an organ, I release energy in the form of emotion. Yeah. And what's really fascinating, so you felt that anger and even the sadness. Yeah. But there wasn't a story wrapped up in it, was there? No. Yeah. yeah. There was no story. There was no going into the intellect and finding a reason for it. Yeah. No need to go through that, that pain and that anguish again. Mm-hmm. Energy released is gone. Mm-hmm. It's so effective and so efficient, this practice. And not, some other people, <clears throat> they will go through a story. Yeah. And, and that's okay. You know, every person, every body, every stress is different, is unique. All the energies are unique. It's more unique than a fingerprint. Um, but wh- however that release comes, it is my role to activate that release, to hold a safe space for that energy to dissipate mm. and to find and to uh, hold you in that space so to find reconciliation and peace. Yeah. yeah. And the next, so science, going back to that, well... Uh, science does understand that we are holding energies in our bodies. They don't quite understand it yet. Meridians are just now in the lines of energy, as yeah. according to Chinese medicine, and nadis or prana, mm-hmm. according to yoga, is only now in medical science being studied. Yeah. Yet the gurus, the rishis, they've known this for so long. Yeah. You know, Patanjali wrote about yoga in 500 years BC. <laughs> so, um, nervous system, yeah. your, parathetic, your parasympathetic nervous system is controlled by a vagus nerve. Yeah. Your vagus or wandering nerve runs around your entire body. Doesn't Wandering nerve. Yeah, that's what the vagus nerve is. Oh, okay. So, that you have your central nervous system yeah. and it breaks up into two different systems. Yeah. One is your sympathetic fight or flight. Yeah. The other is your parasympathetic rest and digest. Yeah. Well, the parasympathetic is ruled by the vagus nerve. It's, it's literally, it starts up in your brain, set, brain cell, uh, brain stem coming down, but then leaves the spine. Most of it, some does go out to the, the follows the whole spine down, but most of it comes out and moves into your heart and moves into your kidneys and moves into your liver and moves all around the body, wandering. Nerve. And, and uh, that, that nerve is what allows us to relax. So it helps our eyes to gently close when we're falling asleep. It allows our uh, connection with our heartbeat, our connection with our breath, the slowing things down. As you know, through breath, yeah. we can relax. Mm-hmm. It's the vagus nerve that's being affected closing all the systems down and saying it's okay you're safe Mm -hmm. you can relax and that's what happens here with tine sang i well we work hard you with your breath me with my presence my singing bowl gentle movement gentle movement to get your body and your energy down at a relaxed state where you feel safe Yeah. So you're just triggering like the vagus nerve also? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, so, but, but, what, but why it's the wandering? Ah, the wan- wandering like... Wandering through your body. Ah, the, okay. Uh, other like the wandering... <laughs> yeah, not, wa- <laughs> not wonder. Not yeah. wonder. Yeah, wandering. sorry. Okay, no, no problem. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a traveling nerve. Ah, so okay, in, okay. instead of no, just no, coming no, down your spinal column, yeah. it travels throughout your body. Yeah. 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 It's very imp- important nervous system, a uh, part of the nervous system. Mm. V A G U S. Yeah. Pronounced vagus nerve. Okay. Yeah. Really interesting um, subject. Mm. The body and also like the massage. And now you just said um, you also practice yoga. So mm. 
is yoga like the practice, the, the daily practice for you? And then the Shinai Tsang, you do it by, by yourself also? Like no, I do. Self, self yeah. Massage? yeah, self massage. Ah, okay. Yeah. And you use it like how often you use it? Um, and so yoga, I, I have an almost daily practice. Yeah. Um, I, different times in my life, I will be practicing six hours a day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I'm in Nepal yeah. with my teacher, six hours a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, with different practice, not just asana. So there's pranayama, there's asana, there's kriya, there's chanting, meditation. meditation. Yeah. Y yoga is so much more than just yeah. asana, to just postures. Yeah. Um, but the physical practice normally around three to six hours a day there. Um, I also lead yoga, I teach yoga here and other places like Nepal. And so some of my, uh, a lot of my commitment at this time is to teaching. So I'm a bit lazy and not doing my sadhana every day. But when I need to, I'll come back to that. Mm. Uh, which so you have this habit created. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, not just habit, which is very important for efficiency and effectiveness, mm. um, But it's also, um, you know, it gives you discipline and willpower. And yeah, willpower. And it, of course, like I, I'm 53 years of age. Mm. So my body is not as supple and not as forgiving as yours. <laughs> so if I, I miss, you know, a week or two weeks, my next couple of sessions back, you know, I'll feel it next day. My body remembers. I'm very lucky because of that. Um, at, you know, at my age, I'm, I feel very comfortable with my, my um, how flexible, how strong I am. Mm -hmm. Always time for improvement, for better technique. Um, but I'm not an Instagram yogi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, uh, that's not who I am. Mm. Um, and my practice doesn't display that sort of dancer-esque um, um, command of the body. Mm -hmm. I have three spinal injuries. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I, I uh, try to keep my practice up, but I also need to focus on my teaching. Chine Sung is also my income. Mm -hmm. uh, yoga teaching, there's a small amount of energy exchange attached to that. Yeah. But on an island where there are a hundred yoga teachers, yeah. that's not where the money is. How many Chine Sung teachers? Are you? Yeah, the, the <laughs> you're connected with them, or um, yeah, ma ma many. I can't say all. No, uh, some of them. Mm. Um, some are not as prolific as I am. Yeah. Um, they're a little shy about their skill. Yeah. Um, but I'm, uh, you know, I, I such a believe in this. It comes from my my heart, and so me to be able to yeah. put it out there is is you know it's, that's where I direct a lot of energy. And I'm blessed because the energy comes back to me in the form of an income. Yeah. Um, so I, I would like to, during the high season, you know, we have such seasonal things going on here. During the high season, um, practicing uh, twice a day is enough. Each session is, uh, and six days a week, mm -hmm. each session is two hours plus. So, you know, if I run on with one session, it might be two, two and a half hours. Two sessions is five hours of a, a, a kind of physically demanding yeah. and energetically demanding practice, yeah. especially if somebody goes through a traumatic release. You mm -hmm. know, I, it's, it, takes, it takes it quite a lot to, to, um, yeah. to hold that space. Yeah, what I like the most in, in, uh, in the session with you, it's like you, yeah, you have this time, like two hours talking about the the practice Shinai Tsang and the history and everything mm. and also after it like um, how can I integrate this experience in my daily life mm. and if some something comes up um, I can talk to you or message you mm. again and this is what I what I really liked about it not just okay here I give you the massage or I give you this tool I give you this technique and then uh, yeah much yeah. Luck. <laughs> yeah well thank you for thank you for that I, I, I appreciate it um For me, because of what can be released, it's significant that someone can can support you. We, you know, there, I have people three weeks, one month after, still feeling the, the physical and energetic effects from the practice. Those who have you know, gone through a lot have also a processing issues with father, some of them looking at their ancestry pain. Mm -hmm. You know, we're thinking about 
past lives, you, you're thinking about what energies you may have collected from mother, from father, not just from your own pain, mm. and, and, and grandfather, grandmother. Mm. You know, what I find fascinating, actually, is recently I entered Europe for the yeah. first time in a long time. Mm-hmm. And I, I can feel now, practicing on people, still the effects of World War II. Wow. Yeah. In, in yeah. their bodies, in, in their, their interaction with their parents, with their grandparents, the stories. Yeah, that, it's not that, a long time ago. <laughs> it's not a long time ago. Yeah. The pain of that war is still in the bodies of, of people today. Yeah. Now they're triggered, maybe, with this whole uh, coronavirus. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, absolutely. Um, when, w- what an incredible time. Mm. When has such a global incident stopped the planet or, or created similar fears? Only World War I, World War II, Crazy. or more localized conflicts. Absolutely. And now the whole globe <laughs> yeah. is feeling fear, uncertainty. The future is cancelled. Mm. And we have to make a plan. How do we make a plan? Mm. Only conflict has brought the world into a similar position. Yeah. What would you suggest um, to come out of it or to practice it? Like um, you have tools with yoga and chinetsan. I'm really lucky because I found my healing journey five years ago and I've done so much work that I sit in this time blessed, firstly, that I'm on an island surrounded by wonderful energy, an island that we can control in and out. Yeah. The, the virus has, has not come here. Well, yeah. one, we, one person and she, she uh, gratefully um, was, was left healthy. Um, I'm living in bliss. Yeah. But for me also, it's a wonderful time for um, self-reflection, introspection. Yes. I go inside. It's a time to look in oneself and, and breathe, mm. just as the, the earth itself yes. is breathing. You, it's, I spend time in Nepal. Now that my friends are telling me the mountains are being seen from locations only their grandfathers have seen the mountains <laughs> before because of the pollution has subsided. <laughs> okay. You've seen photographs of, of Delhi, which is a huge city, yeah. and, and how with the uh, lack of movement now the air is clear mm. yeah the nature is recovering from this nature's yeah. nature's taking a breather yeah <laughs> and we should do it as well it, this is the point so yeah. I hope that we can get over whatever that fear of uncertainty and come back into ourselves don't get distracted with the television the internet Netflix mm. or the negative energy that will be popping up mm. with the lovers, the family, this close proximity, mm. being told you can't leave, police on the streets, depending on your country, mm. that's fear, mm. so much fear. I think your, your attention is uh, it's the most important tool right now, your attention In, to your focus. Exactly, yeah, yeah your intention. Yeah, where, where you focus on mm. right now. You can focus mm. on Netflix, you can focus on the news, but mm. better focus on yourself and get evolved in this time. Ex- I, I completely agree. But mm. of course, some people, that's far away. I'm sure from the people who listen to you, that's on their minds. Yeah. And, and hopefully... Be able to really take this time to commit without guilt that one day you're not doing your sadhana or one week you missed some breath work or <laughs> one week, okay, I, I, I did watch Netflix yeah. and I, I, I did have a drink uh, and don't feel guilty about, yeah. about that. Because just come back to your practice. Come back to your practice. Yeah. Come back to your breath. Super important. Thank yeah. you for sharing this. Yeah. And I think it's a perfect conclusion today for this podcast. So when the people want to know more about Chine Sang, mm-hmm. about, may, maybe uh, there, there come up a lot of questions right now. Where can they reach you? Oh, or, wonderful. Thank you. And firstly, thank you. I feel really honored that we've had this discussion. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, um, so on, I'm on social media as uh, Healing with Warren Anywhere. 
mm-hmm. Healing with Warren Anywhere. Um, it's on Facebook. Uh, Facebook and the Instagram. And Instagram as well. Um, and you can read all about Chine's song there. Uh, and if you reach out to me, I can point you to some more detailed references. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it is truly a wonderful practice. And, and uh, once again, I, you know, I just feel that we're so blessed for this time. And I hope that the people listening here can feel the peace yes. and, and be able to take that breath mm. to feel alive again. And, and really look inside, what are you going to do now? Um, Chine Sung and other healing practices which break us out of that sense of stress. There are so many different avenues to reach the same place, and that place is peace and love. Hmm. So whatever practice you find, I, I wish you the best. Thank you very much. Kap kum kap. Kap kap. Namaste. Yeah, and uh, thank you for listeners. And uh, if you like this uh, episode, give us an uh, abonnement on iTunes, Apple Podcast, and share this uh, wonderful conversation with your loved ones, beloved ones. And goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thanks again. This was the last part of the short interview series Spiritual Biohacking. Warren Anywhere, or his real name Warren Buttery, is one of those people who combine both parts in himself and his work, both spirituality and biohacking. With this Chine Tsang massage, he has found the almost perfect tool for this. And Nadia and I were allowed to have this very special experience on Kopangan. If you want to connect more with Warren and learn about his work, you can find him on Facebook under Healing with Warren Anywhere or on Instagram under Yoga with Warren Anywhere. You find the links below in the show notes. Sharing is caring. You like the interview? Then link Warren and me to Instagram and share the episode with your friends. Finally, I would like to know more about you. Where are you currently more involved in? Spirituality or biohacking? Or do you even bring both together? I'm looking forward to your feedback on this interview series on Instagram at robin.stolberg. We will be listening to the next episode of the Natural Biohacking Podcast next week. See you then. Bye-bye.